how will it affect our routine daily lives? First and foremost, we're uh, truly invested in everybody's personal rights and their privacy. That's what we live for. We live to support the Constitution of the United States, and that's what everybody wants to live by. And that's what we're here to do. So privacy, personal rights, top priority. We're not going to interfere with those. We're not going to interfere with people's livelihoods or negatively impact the economy. So some of the counties that we're in, they're very concerned we're going to uh, disrupt uh, recreational activities. It's not going to happen. So any type of uh, farming that takes place here, any type of other commerce where this could be uh, an impact by having two Humvees um, come through, we'll take that all into consideration and work it out with the governing body. Judge, in light of the people's, my name is Jim Miller. In light of the people's overwhelming opposition to this uh, martial law program, would the commissioner's court consider reversing their invitation to these guys? And would the court be offended if I told the colonel that I didn't believe a single word that he just said? martial law <clears throat> and is anybody getting paid including the police or any elected officials okay the first part of the question you are no it has nothing to do with martial law period we are title 10 forces not title 32 nothing like that no martial law in any way shape or form we basically simply want to train united states special operations forces for future operations overseas that's it. That's where we operate daily. Even right now, while we're all standing here, there are guys putting everything they've got into it against the enemy that is very determined to rid us off of this plan. Um, I'll just ask this way it's written. When we have a federal government that cannot tell the truth, how do we know that what you're saying is true? Uh -huh. <laughs> Just ask everybody not to mix apples and pumpkins, okay? Let's do it that way. This institution right here has been around for over 240 years. I've transitioned in this uniform, various shades of it, under five presidents, all of it peacefully. You may have issues with the federal government. You may have issues with the administration. So be it, okay? But this institution right here has been with you for over 240 years, period. I like that. And my question is, I want you to address receiving this and cutting it out and not bring it back by any other name that your strategist may find in this dictionary that has anything to say that it is a preparation for martial law. Yes, because it is not a preparation for martial law, sir. That's what you say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that succinct answer. Um, uh, Colonel, you've said that uh, this is a training military exercise, and uh, uh, this training entails unconventional warfare, which is guerrilla warfare, guerrilla warfare training, which is, includes psyops, psychological operations, which is a weapon, psychological warfare is a weapon, and it appears that the, psych the psyops are taking place right now, and psychological operations uh, being psychological warfare, that would be a weapon being used against citizens if you're talking about blending in, obtaining information, um, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, how do you respond to that, sir? Uh, one, there's not a, a PSYOP campaign going on associated with that. This is an information brief, and that has uh, nothing to do with private citizens uh, in Boston yeah. County. So I, I wish you could clarify the question because it sounded more like a statement in the end. The question is, is psychological, uh, the sci psychological uh, operations, is it considered uh, psychological warfare? Do you, do you, is, that, is it considered weaponry in your Army training? You no, know, it's, it's an operation. It's a line of uh, operation or a correctional line of effort at that point, uh, not an operation. It's just the way that the effects are masked differently. 
So I'm not, I'm not going to get into this. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'm telling you guys, intelligence gathering every, you know, on, on citizens. That's not going to occur with this training exercise. Thank you, sir. The question I have, and I, may, I just need to be clear on this. Now, you're going to have plainclothes people that are going to be blending in, right? On private property. On private property. You got a bunch of people out there that are acting like they don't know and they're blending in or something? or it, It's part of the AAR process, so you're in the military. Yeah. You know, it, they go back and they come in and say, hey, look, you did X, Y, and Z, okay, but you didn't blend in well. Why didn't you blend in well? You've known that you would have to go do this for a couple of months. You should have studied the area, say, Eastern Europe, and look at how they dress and take in their mannerisms, and you should have prepared for that. Okay, so you can guarantee us that I won't have to worry about the guy standing next to me being some kind of covert operation guy gathering information. They'll come in later to pick everybody up? No. That's okay. Not. I'm going to right. around the fire. Thank you for your question. Uh, the gentleman here in the second row of the lecture. Sir, yes, sir. Okay. Everybody really, truly wants this to be something that it's not, and they're not embracing it. They really want this to be in reality, all we want to do is make sure that our guys are trained for combat overseas. That's it. The same kind of excuses Hitler used to take over Germany, too. My name is Daniel McClue, um, and I'm a resident of Bastrop, Texas. I grew up here. and uh, got a rich uh, family military history, so thank you for your service. Um, you said the home in, uh, Department of Homeland Security was not involved. However, um, they are a cabinet uh, position. It's, a, it's, it's under the jurisdiction of the president, and you're, you are also under the jurisdiction of the president. So under the Bush administration, there's a document created, which is part of a bigger idea, but it was called Right-Wing Extremism, Current Economic and Political Climate Fueling Resurgent and Radicalization and Recruitment. And I won't get too much into that. However, it talks about gun owners, Christians, veterans, um, people that believe in the Constitution. In fact, when I look around in this room, a lot of people that are represented in this room are in that document. Um, and so it seems to me that um, it's maybe kind of a, a, a slight uh, conflict of interest um, that the government would be here in Texas in a place where people believe in the Constitution, where there are a lot of Christians, and if you're not a Christian, you're still allowed to practice your religion, and we respect that. Um, and a lot of people that are proud to be gun owners. Um, and so to see a big military buildup here, um, to me, I think those kind of people that pay attention and look at the documents the government puts out on right-wing extremism um, under the Bush administration, but we've got a new president that, um, you know, I'm not going to go any further on that. But so I'm, I'm curious, and I'm no George Bush fan, but uh, I'm, I'm curious. You said that the Department of Homeland Security wasn't directly involved in this. Um, do you, are you aware of that document, the right-wing extremism? No, you have to, uh, one, take up the issue that you have with the Department of Homeland Security on that. Okay. Uh, two, when you say, hey, we're all in that category, that really does actually uh, template across, I'd say, 90% of the military, regardless right. of service. Um, and I, I again, have so do you find it kind of offensive that the government would potentially label you as a terrorist, sir? Okay, and also, according to Mike over here, he was talking about representation, Mr. Poppy. Yes. I voted for you, sir, and I respect you. And the people of Bastrop do not want this. We have lots of other Okay. But I do have another question. You brought up the fact that you believe in supporting the Constitution. Why aren't you doing this job in Washington, D.C., where they don't believe in the Constitution instead of here? I think you have a question here. Yes, sir. My question is, why is it not reasonable? Look, these folks, you aren't going to be traveling in rental cars or cattle trucks in Afghanistan or any other country. Why is it not reasonable for me as a private citizen who just questions things, maybe conspiracy theories, but somebody just has some reasonable questions? Why is it not reasonable 
for me to see this is absolute training for a domestic rendition program where eventually, worst case scenario, if things go bad, good folks like your swell Miss Warren Oates are gonna go after Alex Jones, Joe Biggs, Jakara Jackson. Why is it not reasonable, sir, for me to be scared about that? Good question. Let's talk about that question. There's a reason that people have problems with this, and those are, it's not irrational fears, it's well-founded fears.